I'm not used to reverse camera. It's very strange. Okay. Ah, so let's go. All right. Right. Here we go. Here we go. We are live this afternoon. It's Graham with my music. And in a minute, I'm going to be speaking to this lovely lady here. Thank um, you. And first, just so that everybody knows where we're coming from, who we're sponsored by, because that, you know, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get going, Mel. See you later. Afternoon. Thanks Good for joining. Afternoon. Um, how are you today, by the way? Well, um, I'm a little confused because I don't usually get up this early in the daytime. Yeah. I, I what usually time, What up, time is it there? It's uh, a little after 11 in the morning. Wow. That's yeah. that's very late for me. See, for <laughs> me, this is this is the dead of night. Oh, right. Okay. I, I usually go to bed, uh, I would say, at least at four or five in the morning you're after nocturnal being in the you're a nocturnal animal yes i am yeah yes. right you see i um i used to be many many mm -hmm. moons ago mm -hmm. nowadays um i since i've had children you know who wake me up at very early in the morning well they tend to do that yes. which they tend to do um now i go to bed early and i get up early Mm. And it, it, it's just the way it is. You can you can you can change between one and the other, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm. So, so you have some music out. When when did for you? When did you first start making music? Oh, it was a very long time ago. I would yeah. say um, when I was a very young teenager, I was going into the clubs illegally in New York City, <laughs> and um, my first appearance was on stage with. Uh, Nicole Willis and Adam Horowitz of the Beastie Boys at right. a club called Danceteria in New York mm -hmm. City. So that was the first time I was on stage. But I've played drums since I was about th mm, three years old. And I've been playing wow. piano since I was about six. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Was it, was it a very musical household then? I come from a long line of musicians on both sides of my family. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so who was your hero? growing up was it was it actually someone in your house no no okay <laughs> <laughs> no uh my well my music oh well, my hero was wonder woman yes absolutely cool and um let's see my musical heroes hmm. i mean there were so many you know there were so many i can't name them all but mm. i would say okay this is going to sound maybe a bit strange but um the reason that I am a musician today is because I saw a flock of seagulls on MTV when I was a kid. Right. Now, here's something quite magnificent. I have a surprise yeah. for you. Here's an exclusive for you. Yeah. I am about to release a track with Ali Score, the original drummer of A Flock of Seagulls. Wow. Next year, early in the year. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. So there you go. You got, you got the exclusive on that. It would be one of your tracks. Uh, it is a track that I wrote and Ali drummed on it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You see, for me, if you were if you were playing with a musician from a famous band like that, there would always done that quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That there's always, I think, there's always the temptation to actually try playing one of their songs. Has have, has that uh -huh. ever been a temptation? Yes, and Ali and I discussed that, but then we said, well, it's probably not the best idea, you know. No, no. Yeah. But no, but not not for general consumption, just for the fun of it is what uh, I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. You see, I I I honestly could not work with someone from the flock of seagulls without trying to I mean, to, to do wishing. Really? I, well, I would. I, I would. would. I think that if we do anything, it will be man-made or nightmares, right? If if at all. But the song is uh, it's an original song that I wrote, so yeah, yeah. 
it's um i i was very shocked to put it mildly because he's the childhood hero of mine uh-huh. um it's it's just i text with him every day and what he's was become it about a good the flock friend. of seagulls what was it about the flock of seagulls they they were they were like unlike anything I've ever seen. They, their low budget music video was spectacular. It just grabbed you. It sucked you right in. The sound, the guitar playing, was phenomenal. I mean, Reno is top notch. It's just it's just really you know a lot of people don't expect that from me, but it's they're they're the reason why I'm here. I also of course love post punk music like Susie and the Banshees and the Cure and Hmm. Um, all you know, I love Wire. Wire is one of my favorite bands. Um, I'm friends with Wire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that what Colin. is that what people is that what people expect from you? Yes, but now I've gone off into a different direction for a little while with this yeah. trap music thing. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what got you into that? The weekend. Right. Really. Absolutely. The weekend. Yeah. Yes. He's a yeah. tremendous influence on me right now. Mm-hmm. Right. And, yeah. and and for what reason? Is it, I mean, is it the use of 80 sounds, sort of combining it with strong melody? It's that, but it's also the power of his vocals. It's just the overall feeling of it, really. Yeah. I mean, no, it's really absolutely. remarkable. He's, he's a powerhouse. And he sampled Susie and the Banshees. Yeah. Which is, you know, you can't deny that that's amazing i think i think it's great i think it's great to have inspiration along the way is is there anybody i mean you you've just said you know you're going to be playing with um a member of flock of seagulls but is, is there anybody if you could choose to that you would play with that's not offered as of yet there are two people okay the first is producer elangelo and then the second is the weekend. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That, that's There's top no on your list. Okay, absolutely. so, we, so we're, we're mentioned both of those in as as we retweet this later Thank on. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Just in case they, you know, they they decide to pick up and you know make that dream mm-hmm. come true. That that would be that would be tremendous. So uh, you got started at a very early age. Yes. At, at what point did it move over from? I like music. I'm doing music too. Do you know what? I actually really want to do music. Um, I would or was say, it always there? Well, uh, it's always been there since I was little. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd sit in my cousin's basement and bang away on the drums and, you know, listen to records and just like bash away. And, you know, it's always been there. I, 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 don't, I started writing songs when I was about six or seven years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What were those songs about? Um, I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't, but, you know, I, I don't think they had lyrics at that point. I think it was just mostly piano. And I just, I would go to the library. I lived in Miami as a child. And I had access to a grand piano in the library. I had a friend yeah. who worked there. So I used to just go there and just tap it out and sit there for hours and play the piano. So, did you have, did you have formal lessons on piano? No, but I did have formal lessons on vocals. I was yeah. coached by Dr. Robert Sharon in New York City uh, for quite some time. And hi, Dr. Sharon, I still love you so much. He's wonderful. He's retired in Florida right now. Yeah. Um, he is he's magnificent. So um, so so when you started learning piano, what was it? Did, did you have find that you had an actual ear for piano? Yes. Or yeah. Yes, and my father was a jazz pianist. So now I was unfortunately estranged from my birth father. Um, Mm. My mother and he split up. But, you know, it's just, I don't know. I can't explain it. It's just a very strange thing. I just just was drawn to it, and I started doing it. And then when I was a young teen, I said, oh, I want to be like these people on MTV. That's what I want to do. And I did it. And now, oh gosh, I've uh, I've really done it <laughs> with some very intense people, and I must tell you, Graham, that I did not expect it at all, and I'm very humbled by it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, absolutely. What What do you prefer? Do you do you prefer 
recording music or do you prefer actually performing music? Equally. 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 Yes. I love to be on stage. I will say, though, that I enjoy uh, drumming on stage quite a bit now instead of being at the front. But I mean, obviously, I have to be at the front, but yeah. drumming is so much fun. I love yeah. it. I love drumming. I'm rubbish at it, but I love doing it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's 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 fine. I mean, look, I can keep I can keep certain beats, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, I've grown up with, I grew up with a, a a drummer, a young mm -hmm. drummer who was a drummer in my band when I was 14 and he was 10. Oh. Who's now who's now wow. one of the world's best drummers? I'm gonna do something strange here for a second. I want to see how. Mm. Hello. <laughs> I can't I can't see for you know what, right? <laughs> so so you know when when you when you work with musicians who are naturally talented mm -hmm. and actually end up being some of the best in the world, you, you soon realize what you're really good at and what you're not good, so good at. Yes, that is true. Right. So drumming drumming for me wasn't, you know, but I really enjoy it. I think it's a very cathartic exercise drumming for me. You know, mm -hmm. there, I'm there's trying nothing, to figure this out. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's, there, for me, there is nothing better than getting behind a set of drums and 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 beating out rhythm for for an hour or so. Uh, actually, just clears the head. It does tremendously. And, Al and Ali says the same thing. He says, you know, when I sit down at the kit, I bash up my my issues. Basically, <laughs> it's yeah. it's wonderful. It's a lot of fun. That's 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 an hour of therapy right there. So mm -hmm. I mean that's good. Now now listen. So in terms of, uh, we'll we'll get serious for a minute. In terms of the yes. latest music, it's obviously deeply personal. Mm, it is. Um, yes. Yeah. D d d d what 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 are you prepared to t tell us about it? Well, uh, seven years ago, I was very sick, and I mean dying. And I went to many doctors and they um, sent me home. They didn't take me seriously. Mm. And so I said, well, you know, you should just at least give me a scan or something. And um, they said, no, just you're just bloated. Go home, you know, watch what you eat, et cetera. And I went home. I got sicker, went to emergency, you know, went to the emergency room. They sent me home. Went to a gastroenterologist and he sent me home. And then at the last moment, I just, I made a phone call to a surgeon here in Newport, Rhode Island. His name is Dr. Nicastri. And I was crying on the phone to his, um, his receptionist. And I said, please, I, I beg of you, let me come in. I'm, I feel that I'm dying. Mm. And I do believe that it is my gallbladder and something is not right. I have all the symptoms. I use what, you know, they call Dr. Google. Mm. Mm. So Dr. Google in this case was correct. Uh, he sent me right across the street for a scan the next day. They found that my gallbladder was not only full of stones, but basically bursting at the seams. And I was in the beginning of sepsis. Um, they sent me to surgery two days later and he saved my life. And, um, so after that, now I already have a history of domestic violence. Sorry if I'm triggering anyone. I don't want to hurt anyone here. Um, I was also homeless on the streets of New York as a teen. So that was enough to deal with. And I come from, you know, a less than perfect home. But my mother is a wonderful human being. Mm. Uh, I love her very dearly. And fences have been mended. However, so I went through all of that. My ex-boyfriend um, beat me. I'm a domestic violence survivor, and then I almost died of a misdiagnosed illness. And um, so he saved my life. And then after that, I developed an illness called wasting syndrome. So what happened to me was that um, my muscles uh, ate themselves alive. I, I, I was so emaciated that um, my arms were just skin and bone. I had no but uh, I, I, you could see the ribs through my chest. Um, I was pretty effed up, to mm. put it mildly. And mm. um, so I developed post-traumatic stress disorder after the surgery. Mm. But now my doctor says that he thinks that the root of it was there for a while, but that this just brought it out. So 
I wrote this song about my experience of almost dying. But then I also thought of all the other people going through these things. And so I, I wanted to um, put it out there for others to know that they're not alone in this. Mm. Uh, women, unfortunately, are often um, discounted by doctors. We're not taken seriously. It's, it's very tough. I, I just I struggle with it every day. I'm on a little bit of anti-anxiety medication. Very, very small dose. But um, I think about, I would say the latter part of 2016, uh, well, no, it was, see, it's hard for me to remember. This is another thing. No, it was about the, or, all right, 2015 and 2016, during that time, I couldn't even listen to music, never mind recording it. Really? I was, uh, yeah, I would have moments where I would just stare at the walls, um, almost catatonic. Like, you know, just freaking out and um, I couldn't talk. If I walked into a shop and music was on, I would run out crying because I lost the one thing that I loved. And not having that is, is hellish. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. Mm. But here I am, these, all these years later. See, I get the years confused because it was a blur. Yeah. But then, oh yeah, actually, in I think it was later 2015 is when I recorded with Andy Anderson from The Cure. And but that was um, I'm going to be blunt here. That song was written prior to my illness, and he drummed on it. Now mm. that's that's something I haven't told anyone. So it's 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 heavy stuff. But here I am. I'm surviving. I'm working hard. I have management now. I have a publicist who I adore. I, my manager is. Like a, he's like family to me. So here I am. I'm alive. I'm, you know, I still, ha I still struggle. I do. I have my good days and my bad days, just like anyone else. So this song, this video um, on YouTube, there's a link below it for uh, donations to the National Alliance uh, for the, you know, mentally ill. Uh, I think it's NAMI, N-A-M-I, mm. National Alliance of the Mentally Ill, and um, trying to raise money for that because they have helped me in the past. And specifically, they helped me when I was going through a domestic violence situation in uh, the 2000s, early 2000s. Well, I'll make sure that we copy that link and put it under the, the interview as well. So that, thank so you that, that people get that. Um, quite quite a story. I mean, is it too early with the release of this for you to, to really know what the the feedback is from from other people that have listened to it and and have gone that's me or or are you getting that already i'm getting a little bit of that yes yeah mm -hmm. yeah and, and it's, is that quite encouraging for you yes it's very heartwarming um i like that very much yeah mm -hmm. so you know if i seem a little shaky this is my first live interview in ages um i've done recorded interviews but it's been a hot minute you know i mean i've i've been on shows on radio broadcasts live and i'm like ah in the camera you know but um this is the first uh interview uh i've done live in well you're doing wonderfully you're thank doing you wonderfully. I, i'm a little shaky and i'm not going to lie to you i'm i'm a little shaky well no, i'm that's, trying to that, handle it that that's fine i thank i know you. what it's i know what it's like i mean i you know thank you for your kindness it means a lot to me it's, it's fine. Um, many, many, many moons ago, when I first did radio, I got I got shoved <laughs> into radio. Yes. Be before I was ready, and it was terrifying. Mm. Absolutely terrifying. Mm. Um, it was, um, you know, when when suddenly someone says to you, you know, there's three hundred thousand people listening, yeah. and you know you're just thinking about all of the things that could go wrong and thinking about what you well, look gigs, like. Or... Gigs are like that. Gigs are just yeah. like that. You have pre-gig anxiety and then you get on stage and you're like, Hey, I'm here. Let's have fun. And it, Let's and, do it, it. and it, and it goes, yeah, it's a, it nerves and anxiety. And, and that, that whole area is a really interesting area because mm. actually a lot of people assume that, 
a lot of people are much more confident than they are mm -hmm. in in real life. Mm -hmm. you know? It's an act we all put on. Yes. Yeah. And I Pretty don't. Much. Yeah. I, I think there are some people who are naturally comfortable and confident in a, in a public arena. But I would have to say that most of the people that I've met over the years who are actually the best at yes. performing or the best in front of people are actually nervous and are actually yeah. a little anxious because I think that that vulnerability is the thing that c connects with the audience. That's interesting that you say that because I've read many interviews of musicians, other musicians who I admire, and they've said the same thing. They said, you know, I, and I, there was one in particular who said, before I get on stage, I sometimes just hurl biscuits, you know, <laughs> and then I get on stage and I'm fine. But yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's all so intense. It really. is. It yeah. is, but but I know, love it. I love it, but it's very intense. Yeah, but I do. I do think that you know you've in a way for you to connect with someone at a, at, on a more emotional level, you've got to be vulnerable to an extent. Yes, that is very true. You know, um, and so it's. I, I think it's it's a it's always a it's always a sort of weighing up between you know the 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 confidence and the uh and the anxiety i, I mean that's where practice comes in right yes. for musicians yeah knowing knowing what you are doing to some extent mm -hmm. and when I, I talked to a musician a couple of weeks ago john mouse about it and he said you know he seems uber confident in front of people but he said he's not but actually, mm. it, it, it comes from going through it and knowing that, you know, you've not pra you've practiced, but also knowing to some extent what you are going to do. I think that audience reaction also plays a big part of it. Oh, for yeah. me, when the audience is in a good mood, it makes me feel comfortable. And if the audience is edgy, you know, with this COVID thing, I'll tell you, I played a gig in Boston on September 11th on a Saturday night. And the audience was fantastic, but everybody was all masked up and we were masked up on stage. Right. So I, I enjoyed that gig quite a bit. That was in Boston, in Somerville. Um, that was the first gig I've done in mm, a little, maybe almost two years. Yeah, about a mm. year and a half to two years. Ha so, have you played Have you played in England much? I oh, can't believe I'm going to say this, but I've never played in England and <sighs> I want to get over there. You do? Absolutely. We we want you to get over here. Thank you. I, I've yeah. been a, I've been asked by several people uh, to do that. So. Let's make that happen, shall we? That, I that would like. Would, that I would lovely. like that very much. Very let's much. Put, let's put that on your list for the next year. Hopefully, mm -hmm. someone yeah, will make that, 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 that happen. Well, um, things things are a little crazy in the world right now, to put it mildly. Oh, and by the way, I've also written songs about the pandemic. Right. I have not yet released them. Yeah. I plan on releasing them. Okay. Yes. That's that's a brave move in a way. Um, because I think I well actually I think lots of musicians have written songs about the pandemic, but they mm. they kind of tried to stay cool about it and say, Well, it's not about the pandemic. But you can hear that it is about the pandemic. Yes. Yeah. But uh, that's that's a that's very brave and upfront of you to say Thank um, you. That I've written songs about the pandemic because it almost seems like you shouldn't go there. Well, there's one in particular um, that I wrote about my very intense dissatisfaction with the administ the former administration, and mm -hmm. in particular, uh, the Senate, and how I feel that they did not act swiftly enough. And so two of my, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be a Debbie Downer here, but two of my friends passed away from COVID. So I had to get it out. Yeah. I had to do it. And that's that. And it's going to get released. And I I need to do that to feel yeah. good about what happened. I mean, it's, well, I wouldn't say good, but I need to get it out of my system. Yeah. I'm a I'm angry. Yeah. And, I'm angry. And, and, and that's that's important. How do you how do you write, by the way? Does do do you feel songs come to you? Are are songs 
existing and you you you're a channel for them or, or is it is it a more of a cerebral process for you how do you write mostly it's emotional i feel right. things and then i sit down but you know and it comes out of me um it just i just sit there and just emote but sometimes i get ideas ahead of time and i just take notes on my mobile or you know on a piece of paper um sometimes things around me inspire me immediately in the moment Sometimes yeah. I get a riff in my head and I just must go sit down and bang it out. Yeah. So it's all, it's all of those things. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever call anyone at four? Cause you say you're a, 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 a late night lady. Do, 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 do you ever call anyone at o'clock in the morning and say, I've got this or not? No. Have you, because... have you done that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because I, I, oh, no, 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 because that would really tick them off. No, I'm not going to do that. To well, people. it would do unless they're up and, and, and they're the same. Kind well, of yeah, thing. I mean, if they're up, you yeah, see, the most of the people that I work with are over the pond, as we say, except for Ali, who's in Florida right now. Yeah. So now I just I don't want to wake them up at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning and be like, hey, I've got a song. Let's let's work on it now. But, you know, yeah, I do work remotely, um, you know, because of this situation we well, that's, uh, have. That's the best yeah. way to best way to work in some respect. Now, so just for so people know, mm -hmm. where where can they get hold of your music? It's on Spotify. YouTube, uh, I'm everywhere. Deezer, I'm all everywhere. of the streaming. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 everywhere. It's on every streaming service. Yeah. Um, it's it's on YouTube. Yeah, my YouTube channel needs subscribers, so please subscribe to my YouTube. Oh channel. yeah, do that, do that. Thank you. Yeah. Now look, let let me ask the question in another way. Okay. How can people subsidize your music? <laughs> that's different. Because everyone can listen to people's music, right? But how can they sub subsidize your music? Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so then I can monetize again because I haven't been able to monetize. Yeah. And okay. um, and I, I do have some vinyl. I have a record out right now um, on Bandcamp. But that was a collaboration with Dirk Ivans from Absolute Body Control. Um, oh, by the way, I didn't, I didn't mention uh, my collabs. Do I it. just realized that. Do uh, that. I, I, I have collaborated with Reeves Gabrels. Hi, Reeves. Uh, from uh, he, from David Bowie. Tim um, Machine. He's um, and Tim yeah. Machine, and now he's yeah. in The Cure. Yeah. Hi, Robert. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. Andy, the late Andy Anderson from The Cure. Let's see. Who else? Uh, Dirk Ivins. Uh, John Ashton from The Psychedelic Furs, who is very, unfortunately, Ill, very ill right now he's been diagnosed with cancer and there is a gofundme for him so oh, right. if anyone's seeing this uh please help john ashton's gofundme uh he needs the help very thank badly you. oh thank you he's yeah. a very dear friend and collaborator i adore him i i love him very much and he's suffering immensely right now um yeah. it's it's been quite a ride so uh yeah uh, that's the gist of it psychedelic furs pretty in pink was one of the first songs that really twisted my brain mm, me too Grow, growing up you know me too me yeah. too and i never thought that was going to happen in a million years yeah. never i mean it's very shocking for me <laughs> I, I i you know some people might think oh she's She's an egotist, you know. She's she's uh, she's full of herself. No, it's not like that. I, ever, I, I'm always surprised. I'm always shocked by it. Yeah. You said hello to Robert. There. Do you actually have Robert on speed dial? No, but I have no. others, others on speed dial. Okay. I, I've I've I met Robert when I was you did? seventeen years old at wow. a uh, at an in store. In yeah. I used to work at Tower Records in New York City, nice. and. Um, that was neat. I, I had a I had a nice day. I did get fired though from that job <laughs> because I spent way too much time upstairs trying to talk with the band, and I was supposed to be down at my register. So, yeah. So, so for two thousand and twenty-two, we need we need you to meet 
the weekend. Ah, uh, yes. To, that's got and, that's got that's got to happen. Thank um, you. And Elangelo, Elangelo, if you Elangelo, can hear this, you are the goat. I want to work with you. Yeah. Oh, so go for it. Got, oh, got, you're going to say another say, name as well. Yeah. Um, there, now my publicist is um, trying to arrange something with Chris Connell from uh, Pig Face and wow. uh, and Murder Inc. So that might happen. And then I'm also going to work with Ava Vox. We're setting that up. So you know, I have. And then there's the Feeny Vix side project. I have I have a lot going on right now. You busy, busy, aren't you? Yeah, you really, crazy busy. Yes, you're really busy. So yeah, uh, that, that, sorry to just, boast here. I, I'm not. No, no, boss. it's. I'm just it, trying to tell you what I'm doing. It, you're, you're just telling us what your day job is. Right, that's fine. So that's that's all happening in 2022. Hopefully, yes, yes. Um, we're going to get more subscribers to your YouTube channel. Yeah, that is if, very important, and that really helps me out a lot. And it also draws attention to the, um, the uh, what's the word for it? Um, the, the the charity. The charity, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, there is some there's some great vinyl collaboration stuff available on Bandcamp. Yes, as well, and if, if people would like to get hold of a piece of vinyl, which is becoming a rarity these days, well, because. You know. Yeah, it's it's on the Ant Zen label right now, but I'm also going to put copies of my own up on my own Bandcamp page for sale after Ant Zen makes their cut. So first it's Ant Zen, and then it will be me. Yeah. But you know, I do get royalties from the streams also. Yeah. Of that track, I get you know I get royalties from streams. Here's the thing, you know, back in the day, um. There was more money, obviously, uh, in before streaming. But I like streaming because anyone anywhere in the world at four o'clock in the morning or whatever time can just go listen to your music. And at first, I was weird about it, and now I actually like it quite a bit. Um, oh yeah, no, so, I, I I love it. But all I say to people is, uh, and, and you know, and oh this merch, is merch, it's merch. Yeah, I have a yeah. merch shop. Yes, well, there you go. You may have seen if you've seen any of my previous interviews. It's what I say is if you're going to stream it, buy some merch. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter, right? You know, give £10 for a T-shirt, listen to the album for free. Mm -hmm. It's fine. You I, know? Have hood I have hoodies, T-shirts, mugs, all those things. You know, they're yeah. up there. Go. Buy. Do it now. Thank Christmas you. Christmas is round the corner. It might not make it <laughs> make it to you by Christmas, but it can, mm -hmm. be, a, it can be a New Year's gift. Yes. How about that? That's yes. a be beautiful thing. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me and it, putting up with all this heavy stuff. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot. Not, it's not putting up. It's 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 important stuff and it's important that we talk about it. Um, well, thank you. Um, and actually, as someone that, you know, used to trudge around the country um, assessing people, Mm -hmm. um for in the workplace who were struggling with various different bits and pieces mm -hmm. um it's really important that we make time to listen it's really really important um it was one of the things that used to annoy me immensely is i was i was tasked with doing assessments and sometimes i was given like half an hour to do an assessment yes with with someone and i would kick back if if i there were occasions when i found people who had ptsd Mm. um and those assessments and i would get told off because i would be there for four hours <laughs> mm. and i just say well here's the thing that person has never had the opportunity to talk to someone with regards to work before now mm. and, and how they're affected by their ptsd if they want to talk to me that's what i'm gonna do that's yeah. great yeah so I just, I just, I just like to add that to people as well. You know, if if someone needs to talk to you, mm -hmm. make the time. And you never know what someone is going through. You never know. You can't tell from the outside sometimes, yeah. or most of the time. I mean, I've had people assume that I was okay when I was breaking up inside and then i've had people assume i was breaking up inside when i was doing fairly well so you know what i always say to people is don't judge a book by its cover like the old saying says um you know when you look at someone you know don't 
here's a message I would like to get out before we end this. Hmm. Another big thing for me is body shaming and um, just shaming people's appearance in general. That's a big no-no because when I was underweight, I was severely body shamed and um, still it sometimes happens to me. And when I was bloated and sick, I was body shamed. So it's like, you know, you can't win. So please, if you see someone, please do not make rude comments about their appearance because you never know what they're going through. And mm -hmm. that's a very important message that I would like to get out today. And I appreciate you allowing me to say that, Graham. Thank you. No, I appreciate you saying it. That's that's the thing, because that's an important that's an important thing that people need to take with them. Folks, hang that on your Christmas hat. And I mean your mental hat, rather than you know, worrying about everything else at Christmas. Yes. Let us not judge others so yeah. heavily. Let's 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 be nicer to people in 2022. Because we yes. goodness knows we need it. Yes, thank you. Do you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. The same Absolute to you. pleasure. Um, Thank you very much. And and I, you know, I I hope I hope people support the single, not just because it's a great single, and because, Thank you. and it's and it's a wonderful song, but because actually the the message behind it's really important as well. So I really I really do hope that uh, people support it, and I will make sure that the links are there so that people can support the charity. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you and, very and, much, Graham. And I'll no doubt speak to you in 2022. That would be lovely. Thank you. You, you have, have yourself a, a good Christmas. Have a great Christmas and a great day. Lovely. Thank you. Bye for now. Goodbye.